Our homes are reflections of ourselves. Their location within a city or at the suburbs of a city point to our wealth and status and their size and decoration highlight not only our tastes but also the ways in which we wish to present ourselves to our social circle. This was indeed very much the case in point for Greek and Roman houses. The location of houses within a city near the Greek Agora or the Roman Forum was indicative of a well-to-do family and their ample and luxuriously decorated reception areas were employed by owners to conduct businesses and promote themselves among their peers. Here at Herculaneum, it is not the Forum, but the edges of the city that are the prestigious locations. So here we see the privileged house of the city located at the borders of the city, featuring large openings in order to afford views for the Bay of Naples. The entrance of the house onto the street was given careful consideration in the Greek and Roman period, as it was the first impression of the house and by extension of its owner that a guest would have. See, for example, in the houses of Delos, dating from the second and first centuries BCE, where upon entering the house, a guest could have a magnificent view of a peristyle courtyard with its marble colonnade, featuring sculptures and lavish mosaics. Houses were indeed carefully designed in order to capture this first impression of a visitor, orchestrating his or her view from the very entrance of the house. See, for instance, the house of Dioscuridis and Cleopatra in the theater district on Dillos. The careful placement of the sculptural complex representing the couple at the opposite side of the entrance in the courtyard of the house was chosen so as to immediately be perceived upon entering the house. In the Roman period, this aspect of the house was given great importance as owners received business guests at their homes and conducted their businesses there. Here, the entrance of the house was designed to be perceived even before entering the house from the street, again carefully orchestrating a view of the house and its luxurious decoration. See, for instance, here at the Samnite house in Herculaneum, how we can perceive a great part of the grand decoration of the house from the street. Upon entering the house, we can appreciate further its grandiose wall paintings of the so-called first style, replicating masonry walls and engaged columns. This decoration, which has been conventionally named first and second style, dates from the early phases of the city, but was kept by owners over time as it pointed to the high status of the owner coming from an old family or affording a house that featured such an old style decoration. We may compare this attitude to the prestige that 18th and 19th century English houses acquire for us today when we preserve their old decoration and architecture. When we analyze the ground plan of a house and the views one had from the street and upon entering the house, we notice that the area of the house closer to the street is more public, more visible to a guest. And the more one enters the house, the more one enters the private areas of the house. It goes without saying that whoever was invited to the inner parts of the house had some kind of prestigious status in relation to the family and such privileged treatment was noted by ancient authors. The security that the countryside acquired with the Pax Romana led rich owners to build luxurious villas in the outskirts of the city and in the countryside. This lifestyle of luxury and leisure in the countryside called otium in Latin, was seen in opposition to the demands of the life of the city and the business one needed to conduct when living in the city, the negotium. The ample space of the countryside gave the opportunity to owners to build extensive reception rooms and peristyle courtyards and stage even more impressive approaches to these luxurious country houses. See, for instance, the Villae at Oplontis, with its imposing colonnade architecture. Even if these houses were designed for leisure, owners employed them to promote their business interests by hosting important guests for lavish parties and extensive stays. 
The architecture of Luxarius Villas became iconic during the first century CE and representations of luxury villas set in the landscape were framed in small panels that started featuring in wall paintings of the so-called four style. We see how this architecture of leisure and luxury in the countryside were perceived and promoted within the city when we look at the ways in which such representations featured in the city houses, see for example in the house of Marcus Lucretius Fronto in Pompeii, in the Tablinum, the room between the atrium and the garden of this house. Here we see four panels featuring this iconic luxury villa architecture being framed and set in the house, a house whose architecture and garden aspires to such grandiose villa architecture. In fact, some houses in the city of Pompeii feature what has been called villa architecture in miniature. We see this in the house of Octavius Quattro, where in the small space of a veranda overlooking the garden, a water triclinium has been squeezed, leaving very little space to actually move around it, while the garden recreates villa garden architecture in small dimensions. Such villa architecture in miniature shows the social aspiration of house owners within the city to recreate the life of leisure and luxury associated with the countryside within the city. Greek and Roman houses reflect the social status as well as the personal aspirations of their owners. Houses were the lucky of business meetings and their architecture was carefully designed to orchestrate views from the street and upon entering the house so as to impress visitors and business guests. At the same time, the entrance areas of a house are socially meaningful barriers. The deeper one enters the private areas of the house, the closer one has a connection with the owner of the house. The architecture and decoration of the houses are very indicative of the personal and social aspirations of their owners. The houses opened onto the street in order to stage the owner within the city. Similarly, the architecture of the villas in the outskirts of the city and in the countryside was carefully staged in the landscape so as to create an impression to a visitor from afar. The architecture of Laxarius living in the countryside acquired great importance and status in the first century CE and owners used it to inform the decoration and architecture of houses within the city. So owners recreated villa architecture within the city and used iconic views of villas in the decoration of the houses so as to make reference and relate to the lifestyle of leisure and luxury associated with luxury villas.